Welcome back to my Blender How to Make and for today, thumbnails. If you're new to Blender, then go ahead and download Blender at blender.org, no profile needed, or you can go to the Steam store and type in Blender and download it from there. Both links will be in the description. Before we start, I'll show you what you will learn for today. Camera setup and make it the right size for exporting. Importing a screenshot, add in a text and modify it. How to import a font for your own unique style. Modeling different shapes. Rendering, exporting your thumbnail the right way. And how to make the second thumbnail within 30 seconds. Now go ahead and open Blender. Don't be afraid of all the stuff you see. If you follow the steps correctly, things should be fine in the end. Since this is an easy tutorial, I just want to say two things to the new people. One, I got a tiny little display over here. You can see if I right select this camera down here, it will show I use it the right mouse button. And with this, I come to the second thing. This program uses the right mouse button to select things. If you select by accident with the left mouse button, you will move this spawn orb. The spawn orb will spawn in all kinds of stuff. You want to have it on grid mode as much as possible. It will make sense later on. In order to place this back, press Shift S and choose Cursor to Center. With this being said, let's start the tutorial. The first thing you can do is select this lamp, press Delete and click OK. You can do the same with this cube, right mouse button on it, press Delete and OK. The next thing we are going to do is the camera setup. Since when you spawn in a screenshot, it will always face towards the top. So we want our camera on the top facing towards the bottom. Go ahead and press numpad 7 to go to the top view. And then press 5 to go into complete grid mode. Now right select this camera down here. And press Ctrl Alt numpad 0. And now you got the camera on the top facing towards the bottom. We also want this to have the right size for exporting. So go ahead and fill in 1280 times 720. We're also going to put this on 100%, but first I'm going to show you what it will do. If you would press F12 right now, you will see a small picture of nothing. Press escape to get out of it. When you put this on 100%, and press F12, you get a larger picture. Now I'm going to show you how to import a screenshot. You will need to turn on a very handy app. So go ahead and click on File. Click on User Preferences. Then make sure you're on Tab Add-ons and type in the search bar Image. Now go ahead and look for the line Import, Export, Import Images as Planes. Make sure it's selected and click on save user settings if you use the same save you only have to do this once now you can go ahead and press shift a and select images as planes choose your screenshot import as planes and there you go it's very small we want to make sure it matches up with your camera so go ahead and press s for scaling and move your mouse towards the bottom of the screen and make sure that it just passes the boundaries of the camera and click on left mouse button. Now, if you press F12, you still won't see your picture. That's because it's dark in a 3D program. That's very normal. In order to show it up, go to the material tab with the ball. Then you have to go to shading, go to emit and click on it. Type one, press enter. Now it's lighting up. Press F12 again, and there you got your screenshot. Press Escape to get out of it. Now we are going to add in a text and modify it. In order to do that, press Shift A, and you go lower until you find the word text. Click on it, and there you go. You can, by the way, zoom in by using your scroll button. In order to change this text to something useful, press Tab, use Backspace, and type in part space one and press on tab again if you press f12 it won't be shown up because it needs to have a light you're going to light this thing up you don't need to press on new because by default if you click on this ball it already have one material so I'll go ahead and select this one and or go to shading emit press one enter and it's lighting up want to check that out press f12 and there you go 
Now I'm going to press G and I'm going to move it up at the corner, something like this. Then press F12 and there you got it up in the corner. Now what I want to do first is give it a little bit of a black outline. Now press numpad 3 to go to the side view. And then you can scroll to left and right while holding control and move your scroll. Or you can go up and down by holding shift and move your scroll. In this case zoom in for a bit. Something like this. Press G. Press Z to lock it for up and down. Then hold control. With this you can move it on grid mode. If you don't hold control you can move it a lot smoother. But in this case I'm going to move it up till here. So there's one block left. And we're going to give this a thickness. Go ahead to the F tab. Go to extrude then type in 0 0.010 and there you go it has some thickness it will make sense later on why you have to do this when you press numpad 0 you can go back to the camera mode first thing we're going to do while selecting this text press shift d this will duplicate it then press escape to leave it on its place the first thing we're going to do is make it black with this material being selected you want to press plus because if we use the same one make it black the other text will be black too and that is something we don't want after you pressed on plus it will say material 001 then you can go ahead to this white part down here click on it and drag it down until 10 or 11 now it will overlap the white one so in this case we need to change the thickness so change this extrude to 0 0.005 and now the white part is back again in order to make it a black outline we're going to make it thicker to make it more thicker you need to be at offset so go ahead and type in 0 0.010 and there you go you got your black outline you can check it out by pressing f12 and as you can see it gives a little bit more depth in this case it's a nice moment to save it up Go to file and save as. In this case we're going to save up this screenshot. And then we make a second one with shapes. So go ahead and press numpad 3. Zoom out for a bit. Press B to make a drag box. Do something like this. With everything being selected press shift D to duplicate it. Press escape to let it go. Now we are going to move it to a different room. So it's not in our way of modeling stuff. Go ahead, press M. With this you can see all kinds of different rooms. We're gonna put it on this one below here. Now it's gone. In order to go to that room, you have another one down here. This is the one where you actually can go to the other room. Now go back to room number one. Press numpad zero to go into camera mode. Then press Z to get in wireframe. Now press B to get this drag selection box, select all of these, press G and move it down till something like this. Now I'm going to show you why it's important to have this spawn orb exactly on grid. Go ahead, press shift A. We're going to import a plane because we're going to make some nice shape. Press G and Y to move it down till something like this. We're not going to do this in camera mode, we're going to do this in top view mode. So go ahead and press numpad 0. So we are in top view mode. I'm going to show you a few things with modeling. The point is, we need to move these two orbs all the way down here, right? Which in case means, if you press B and select those two, press G and press X to lock it. If you move this one here, you will need to move the other ones there. And we don't want to do double work. So in this case, press B, select those ones, then press G, press X, and make sure these ones are perfectly on the green line. And don't forget to hold Ctrl while moving this, so it will always be on grid mode. In order to not make this double, we're going to add in a mirror. You can do that by this tool, then click on Add Modifier. And click on mirror and you straight away see that it added another part down here anything else we're going to go back to camera mode by pressing numpad zero 
In this case, I want to get out of this. You do that by pressing tab to go into edit mode or out edit mode. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner by pressing S, pressing Y. And just something like this. I don't want to make it huge. And press B and select part 1. Press S to scale this too. So something like this. Press G, press Y and kind of eyeball this out. You don't have to grid everything up. Then select this shape again. Go into edit mode by pressing tab. Unselect these by pressing A. Then press B. Drag it over those two dots. Select them. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to add in another part by pressing E of extrude. Make sure you press X to lock it like so and then place it somewhere down here. Now what I want to do is have the same space as between here. I want to have it down here. So go ahead press B to select the other ones too. Press G. Press X to lock it. It's a lot of stuff guys. And then move it somewhere around here. You have to eyeball this all out to make it yourself easy too. What we're going to do now is select everything. Like so. Then we're going to shift the duplicate. Then press escape to let it go. Press G to move. Press Y to lock it. And then just move it all the way up until something like this. And now we need to fill up this gap. And I'm going to show you very easily how to do that. After I scale this a little bit down. Because the top we don't going to add in text. So this one can be a little bit thinner. And then I'm going to remove it. Remove, not like deleting it, just removing it. Something like this would be nice. Now we're going to fill up the gap. There's one easy way to do that. Press B to select those two. Press B to select those two. I only have to press F to fill in the gap. There you go. Got a nice outline. Press F12 to check it out. It's black. Yes. And I'm getting out of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to give this a color. So go ahead to the material tab by clicking on this ball. Since we have no other ones we can use, just click on new. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this yellowy with a tiny touch of orange. Like so. When you press F12, it's not showing up because we need to light it up. Go to sharing, go to emit, press 1, enter, press F12. And there you got a nice outline. In this case, before I'm going to change this standard font for a unique font which I found on the interweb we first gonna give this a different name so what i always find handy is open wordpad and then i want to type in what i want to have as text in this case far cry 5 double dot cheese burger i'm going to copy this text very easily then i'm going to right select one of these text in here i'm going to tap it and backspace the stuff and then ctrl v to put it down i'm going to do the same with the other one just select this going to tap backspace ctrl v tap to get out of it now as you can see this g is sticking out on the bottom the y is sticking out on the bottom you can make this a lot more wider it's not really a problem it's a nice font but in this case i want to show you that i have made a mistake that's a lot better. That's how you write burger. So in this case, we're going to add a font. You can freely download this font on dafont.com. It's called Bebas Kai. And then put it in a folder where you can easily find it. And then with the text being selected, go to this F tab. And then go ahead to font. Then open it with this little file down here. Go to where you store it. Select Bebas open the font and there you go it has been changed the other text select it then go to this f down here since you already added you only have to select it and there you go and as you can see the g is not sticking out and the y is not sticking out then again the standard font is nice too but i like this one better 
go ahead, press G, press X, and then kind of eyeball this out towards the middle. I'm going to put it something like this, and then I'm happy. Press F12, and there you go. Now, as you can see, this font has not been correctly at the B. That just happens sometimes with some fonts. In this case, we can go ahead and fix it. First thing we will do is press numpad 7. Then go ahead and zoom in. And don't forget, while holding shift, you can go up and down. With holding control and mouse wheel, you can go left and right. To have a better look of this, you can click on this ball down here and go to select material. And then press A to unselect this stuff. You can then again see it's not okay. In this case, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can better see it. I'm going to click on materials to see if I select this black one. There we go. I, with this black one being selected, you can see the outline, but it's not filling up. I already discovered how to easily fix this. Just make the offset a little bit smaller. 9, and you can see it's totally perfect. When you press F12, it's there. And you also have to keep in mind uh, with the size of the text and all that kind of stuff that thumbnails, for example, on YouTube will be shown like this. So you might want to make it a little bit bigger. In this case, it's just for example. Uh, also, you can see that the special outline is gone. There is a reason for that. Just press Z, then select this outline, then press numpad 3, and you can see that it's on the same layer as the screenshot. And I'm going to show you why I moved the text also up. Press G, press Z to lock up and down. And just move it somewhere in the middle. You don't have to grid this. Then go to back to the camera by pressing numpad 0. Then you can go ahead, click on this ball, click on material, and unselect this. And you will see it stay there. Now go ahead, press Ctrl S to save it. If you haven't saved it already. Now before I'm going to show you how to correctly export this to a PNG file. I first want to show you how quick you can change this thumbnail into a second thumbnail. Select the screenshot. Press delete. Delete it. Press shift A. Image as planes. I'm going to select boomer. Import planes. Import image as plane. Make it bigger just outside the boundaries. Then go to material tab, go to shading, make emit 1, there you got boomer. I'm going to go back to my text pad, type in boomer, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my text, press tab, backspace, ctrl V. You can also select this text, tab, and then ctrl A, so you select everything, press backspace, then press ctrl V to pass it. Then I'm going to go to Z. Press B, I can drag box, so I also select the other one, press G, press X, move it off side a little bit. There you go, I got my second thumbnail within seconds. Now I'm going to show you how correctly export this into a PNG file. Go ahead and go to the render tab. And the only thing you first have to do is you have to select a folder where you want this to be exported. After you have done that, you have to change the timeline because the timeline is really something for animation. And if I click on animation right now, it will poop out 250 of these pictures and I only need one. So go ahead, click on end, press one. So now it will only poop out one frame. Now you can go ahead and click on animation. And there you go. You got your screenshot pooped out. And go ahead to the folder which you selected to export the screenshot. And there you go. You got your screenshots for your video ready. And as always, press Ctrl S to save your work. So when you come back, you can easily make your second thumbnail. And of course, there are a lot more ideas to make your own unique thumbnail. You just have to mess around and find your own style. In this case, if you guys have some questions, leave a comment below. If you have some requests for some tutorials, leave a comment below. If this was the video you were looking for, give it a like and subscribe so you will notice when I upload more Blender videos. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.